Hello there, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, I see who you are. You're Dan from PRB. Good morning. So, for the people who don't know what PRB is, uh, what is PRB? Uh, PRB is a website and app that enables people to borrow the things they need from others in their neighborhood in 30 minutes or less. So, with PRB, you don't have to spend money on things you only uh, need once or once in a while, and you get to feel good by helping someone out. Okay, cool. So uh, I think you have done this pitch many, many times. It goes really, really smooth. So how did you came to, to the idea of, of PRB? Um, I came to the idea, I, I, I guess there's you know, always a combination of things that lead to, uh, to, to starting a company. But one important driver for me was um, the inspiration I got in 2009. My house burned down uh, that year and it forced me to basically to, to to start asking for help. Before that, I always tried to be autonomous and not depend on anyone except myself. And um, yeah, in 2009, I, I had to. And that I actually made me realize two things. One is um, that people really enjoy helping each other. And the other thing that I discovered is that um, uh, actually, uh, I, I kind of had to rebuild all my, uh, my, my, my house, right? I had to buy all this stuff. And uh, I started thinking about what, which of these things do I really need? Uh, if, we're, if we're more connected, if, we're, if, we can, if we can depend on each other, then do I really need to buy all this stuff? Do, do, does a, ha you know, a street with 100 homes need 100 lawnmowers? Or, or could we also have 10? So, and, and then you get the idea of, of, of Peerby, but how did you, yeah. How did you start? Because it's, it's uh, I think the world is uh, full of great ideas. Uh, the same also with uh, the uh, like with WhatsApp. Uh, uh, I think there are thousands of people who was uh, invented WhatsApp, but there's only one who built it. So how did you build uh, PRB? We just got started. <laughs> I think that's the the first uh, thing you have to do, right? Uh, just take the first step and uh, and get going. So and what and uh, what were your first steps? And and who is we? Um, so, so my first step was to start talking about it to other people and trying to figure out how I could uh, finance this, how I could learn the things I needed to know to, uh, to found the company. Um, I started uh, looking into uh, you know, programming languages. I think the funny thing about starting a company is it's not one step. You, you have to start, I mean, you, I mean, obviously there's one thing that you start with, but I don't remember what it is. It's always a thousand things you have to do and that you have to start with. So yeah, th there's not really a simple story <laughs> to it. You, you get going and you do lots and lots and lots of things. And then you start by yourself and with a small gr gr a group of people and, and then you grow. Um, so what happened while uh, growing the, uh, the PRB uh, platform? Um, so the, the, <laughs> the very first time we tested it was in, on a student campus in uh, the east of the Netherlands. And it was terrible. It didn't work. Software didn't work. wasn't the right audience. It was it was a, a bit of a disaster. And so we we figured maybe this was not for students because at first we thought this is the perfect audience. Well, that that didn't turn out to be true. Um, so we decided to to change um, some of the software to try and relaunch it in a, in a neighborhood in Amsterdam. Um, so so we did that. And um, um, that started working, and it started gaining traction in one neighborhood, and then the next, and the next, and then after a while, we had, we had you know people all over Amsterdam using it, and then all over the Netherlands, and um, we st we raised some money, we built a team, and uh, now we're in 20 cities in Europe and 10 pilot cities in the U.S. We're 25 people, um, and. Um, yeah, build, building a company. Mm. Yeah, that sounds like a really smooth ride, especially when you said you started <laughs> in 2009, but I don't believe it was. So, so uh, what were the things, uh, what assumption did you made uh, 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 while starting or in the, in the first years uh, who didn't turn out at all? Yeah, so we, the, the company itself was, uh, was founded in 2012. Um, and what assumptions did we have? We assumed that people would want to receive money for lending items, which didn't turn out to be true. Uh, as I mentioned, we thought at first that students would be the perfect audience, which didn't turn out to be true. Um, and there's still many things, in a sense, that we haven't figured out. Um, it's, it's, it's not a complete model yet. It's, it's really 
um, you could say it's, it's half a company and, and we're still figuring out what the other half should look like. And you say we, so how did you find the, the right people? And um, I think also really important, how, how do you keep them? Um, I, it, it, it's, it's hard. It's hard. You really have to figure out uh, who you want to work with and you have to figure out if you, if you both have the same IDs. Um, the sort of first two guys I worked with were, uh, one was a friend and one was, was someone who, who joined me after I, I pitched this ID uh, at an event. And um, one of the two uh, uh, basically wanted to work part-time and, and while we were developing the, the company, um, he, he went uh, to live on a tropical island for uh, for a few months, and uh, and I wanted to go full steam, uh, you know, just go go 100% for the, for this ID. So that that wasn't a great match. Um, then the other guy was really wanted to go for it, but uh, he, he he had to pay his uh, uh, you know his home and uh, had to pay for his family and things like that. So it was really hard for him to go all in on a, on a startup. So. Um, you know, that's, that's circumstances and motivation that you have to figure out. Um, and then I found uh, two co-founders who um, um, wanted to join and wanted to, had the ability to join full-time. Um, and um, then um, we still had some struggles, so, so one of them isn't here uh, anymore. Uh, but uh, Ilko, my, uh, my, my co-founder, is uh, still here and uh, it's been going... Uh, pretty well uh, for the last few years so uh, it takes a little bit of uh, you know struggle but then uh, then you get there yeah and in the end so there are now two uh, two co-founders uh, two founders uh, but in the end when you look at the media uh, uh, you're always uh, on, on the on the foreground so how is it for the other founder so what role does the other founder has in the company right now uh, Ilk is uh, our CTO so he's your, he's your chief of technology um, and that's what he focuses on most, really uh, making sure that uh, everything uh, technological functions and um, <laughs> keeps working and preparing for, for the future of, of PRB. Um, yeah, so that's, that's his role. Yeah, it's a really important one, I think. <laughs> uh -huh, absolutely. <laughs> it's and more important than mine, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you're, you're both. It's, uh, everybody adds value from his own person, uh, I really believe in. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, you also said you, you, uh, you also uh, got some money from investors, but uh, also the disappointment that people didn't want to have money for, their, uh, for, uh, for borrowing their stuff. So uh, the revenue model was uh, uh, quite a, a challenge, or I think it still is a challenge. So at what way do you convince investors to invest in a company where the revenue model, like uh, uh, with Snapcar, it's, it's really really clear. Mm -hmm. uh, it's car sharing, uh, uh, there's a fee, uh, you got insurance, you got NFL, your platform, and uh, that way you can grow and make profit. Uh, with Peerby, it's, 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 it's a different case. I think it's, it's, it's a much more interesting case, but mm -hmm. it's a different case. So in what way did you uh, convince the investors to, uh, to, uh, uh, to invest in your company? Well, you, you have to find the right investors. And, and actually, to start, I don't think it was a disappointment to see that people didn't charge money for, for lending. Um, it was a surprise, though. Uh, I would say it was actually it's, it's, it's super interesting and, and actually really nice to see that what drives us as human beings, you know, uh, to care for each other is not uh, money. It's just something intrinsic to our nature. We, we like to help each other and we don't need to receive anything in return to do that actually um, so but yeah that is a challenge when pitching it to uh, to investors uh, so so you have to find the right investors and, and for us the right investor is an investor that believes that what if, if there is enough engagement if people are you know care enough about what's about the service that we're offering them that in the long run we'll find a way to you know to turn that value into value for them as well and do they also force uh, so did you did, did, do they also give you a time frame in okay done uh, in two three four five ten years you really need to to have a a good revenue model for PRB or no no there's uh, no uh, no deadline uh, for that but I must say I'm I'm um, I'm probably the one putting that putting the deadline on it because uh, in the end, uh, a company needs, needs to be sustainable. We cannot be, you know, running on, on investments forever. Um, so we, we need to figure out how to how to do this and how to make 
how to make this company at least break e e even or uh, profitably, uh, uh, profitably. Yeah, and, and, and one way did was was uh, getting the uh, the micro insurance uh, with uh, Central Beer Armea, a Dutch insurance company. How did you came in, uh, how did the process uh, went because uh, uh, yes they're running up front in the insurance business but it's still the insurance business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it took uh, took me a, a long time to uh, to partner with an insurance company. Uh, from the very beginning I thought it would be important to have some sort of uh, protection for our members. Um, but the first two years I couldn't find an insurance company that wanted to do any innovation. At, the, at that point there was, it was non-existent innovation in insurance companies. Uh, but after a while we gained so much traction and we got so well known in the Netherlands uh, that suddenly the tables turned and, and companies started approaching us actually um, and asked us whether they could do our insurance. Um, and basically we picked Central Beer from, from that list. Okay, and, 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 and now the insurance part is, 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 is a part of the future revenue model because you have to sell quite some uh, micro insurance uh, to, to, to make some serious money. The other thing I saw on your website was a, a pilot with, uh, with, uh, with PRB on demand where people can, uh, yes, uh, uh, where PRB is bringing the, the goods to, to the people. So, mm -hmm. at what way is it, uh, did this, uh, uh, is it a pilot or is it, or, or is it a, a, a full model uh, already? Um, yeah, we, we're running uh, experiments every week, and uh, this is one of the experiments that we're running um, on, on business models. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a fun experiment. Um, there's, there seems to be a, a clear need with a, a, a group of our, our members, mainly the people that are, are, are very busy, um, that would like to, you know, borrow items. They feel that it doesn't make sense to to buy things that they're only going <laughs> to need once or once in a while. But they're actually they're too busy to uh, to to kind of uh, go out and uh, and 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 pick it up and do it, make all the arrangements. Um, one thing that we notice is also that because you have to and pick it up and and bring it back, so that there are you know you have to uh, figure out two time slots that, that both of the parties are available, which can be a bit of a, a problem sometimes. Uh, so this is one of the solutions we're trying and uh, it's, I must say it's, uh, it's working quite well so far. Okay, cool. And, and are you uh, uh, jumping on your bicycle yourself or do, or do you partner with a, a, a transportation company? So in, in the long run, we'll, we'll partner with um, either a transportation company or we'll ask our community members if they uh, want to do delivery. Um, but for now, um, because we want to learn as much as possible through this experiment, it's, uh, it's our own people that uh, j uh, get onto a bike uh, cycle to, uh, to our members and talk to them to figure out, you know, why do you need this? Uh, what's, you know, what's important for you? And, and how, how, are, how, how are you experiencing it? So to, to learn as much as possible, we do it ourselves to start with. Uh, cool, and, and, and can you share some, some other experiments with business model that uh, I didn't saw on your website or maybe I missed? Um, so another thing we tried um, is uh, basically you could say it's rental. Um, and um, so the, the, yeah, that's a model we tried. So, so just ask people to, to pay for the things they're, uh, they're borrowing. Um, um, and another model that I mentioned is that you already mentioned is the is the insurance. <coughs> so there's there's three different models, and um, we're uh, I'm, I'm, maybe we'll do none of them, but we, we want to learn a lot about what potential models could be. Yeah, interesting. And I think uh, how do you deal as an entrepreneur? Because uh, many people are watching to keep uh, to appear be uh, about okay, it's great of the of the success and and, and it works. So that's mm -hmm. that's a really great achievement. And the other side, the critical say, okay, but hey, how are they ever going to make money? Mm -hmm. uh, don't uh, how is it for you to uh, because in the end, like I saw with uh, with the with the on demand uh, 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 experiments, that people are really focusing. Okay, so that's their next step. So. Are people really focusing on, okay, do, do people see experience as the next step or how do you experience that, that, that uh, yourself? Um, yeah, I guess so, you know, with, with, for us uh, an experiment is just an experiment <laughs> and if it works we might build on it and if it doesn't work we, we stop, stop it again. Um, 
And it's quite funny. It's sometimes in press, um, these things get picked up. I, uh, I, I think the Telegraph wrote about our on delivery, but I also see this happening to other companies where they're experimenting with something, like Facebook will run some sort of experiment or, or, or Tinder, and then the, the press will uh, you know, cover uh, how they have a new business model or how they're doing this new thing. And in reality, tech companies are doing uh, multiple new things every week. So it's just the one thing that, that someone, some, the, some experiment someone ran into. So I think that's important to, to maybe also realize that tech companies are running experiments all the time. I mean, the, the good ones. And, 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 and how are you doing this with communication with your members? Because they, uh, they are reading uh, the Telegraph and other, uh, other media. Uh, so the, the, the media is, is sometimes giving the, the uh, not to the right uh, uh, things about your, your developments. Uh, at what way do you communicate these new uh, uh, trials to your customers or to your platform members? Yeah, so, so that's, that's actually a bit of a dilemma sometimes. Uh, we don't want to confuse people too much about what, what Kirby is. Um, and we also, but we also want to run these experiments without telling people it's it's an experiment all the time because then that will actually influence the experiment. You know, if you tell one, someone it's just a test, then yeah. they're gonna probably gonna look at it from a different in a different way. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a bit of a dilemma, and I guess it's different for every type of test. If it's something very radical, then we might not call it Pierby, We might do it completely off of brand uh, in that sense and it, if it's really close to what we're offering we might do it uh, and call it still call it PRB or we might do it in another country do it in the US yeah. or in the UK and, and test it there yeah yeah so that I also think that companies are just uh, uh, with the development uh, d department they're just thinking about okay what would the media say if we just say this? Uh, 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 like with Uber, uh, there's some, some, uh, sometimes launching tests, and sometimes I think, okay, I think you're only launching it because to look, okay, is the press picking up it again or not? Yes, <laughs> they're fools. They are. It's it's it's, it's uh, yeah, it's interesting to uh, to see. And when you look at yourself as as, as a person, because for you this is a really a really a roller coaster a learning mm -hmm. experience. So mm -hmm. so how? Because uh, uh, I'm talking to quite some some collaborative economy entrepreneurs, and what I also really see is that they're really good in, in focusing. Because there's so many opportunities uh, at, at, uh, to do to start with, but they're focusing on on, on making their products uh, the best products available. So, at what way did, do you keep yourself focused on on, on, on doing the right things with PRB and uh, ignoring all the other opportunities you will see uh, in your in your uh, uh, yeah uh, nearby? Uh, yeah, by, by doing the things that you believe in, but it's really hard. Yeah. I guess focus is one of the, the few things that are um, almost impossible to prove whether, you, whether you're on the right track or not, because there is a thousand things that you could do, but you can only try uh, you know, very little, very small amount. Uh, so there's no way to validate that all those things that you did not do were actually you know, maybe brilliant ideas that you should have done. Uh, you can only test whether the things that you try are, are, are the right things or the wrong things. Um, so this is the biggest, I think it's the biggest dilemma. And I'm, I'm not necessarily saying that I'm, I'm good at it. Um, I think it's, it's the, the, that's the one thing that's, that, that might keep me up at night. Like what, what do we focus on now? What should our focus be? And sometimes I feel like we're too broad and then in other areas sometimes I feel like we're too narrow and then it's a constant struggle in trying to trying to think about this. What's the right balance? How you know what what how, what will make us a, a better uh, offer a better service if we do more if if we do less? Uh, yeah, that's uh, it's tough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. And and what way do you do you get help from other people? Uh, I know you you also got a board of advice. You also uh, joined the, the Workstart uh, incubator. So at at what way do you do you get the right people uh, uh, around you as a person to that helps you to to make uh, better choices or to make less failures? Mm -hmm. uh, in what way? Or yeah. Uh, how did you uh, formed a group around you of people that uh, that help you uh, with uh, yeah uh, doing the right things? Yeah, I guess it's uh, you meet people along the way, and 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 some, and there's just a natural you know connection with some of them, um, because you know they have a, a, a they are very smart, or they have a very specific view about something, uh, and they also like what 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 you're doing, and 
you, you kind of stay connected to these people along the way. So it's meeting meeting a lot of them and figuring out which ones are, you know, have have the most valuable input, and and staying in touch with those. Um, and it can be pretty hard. Um, there's I mean there's there's people in different phases that. You know, there's the, the for maybe maybe someone who's a great early stage advisor might be terrible in helping you to scale up. So it's you're always constantly, you know, kind of also trying to figure out is you know who's the right person for this specific question or for this specific phase. Um, so yeah, it's a that's a it's a constant search as well. Other thing about a startup is is search. <laughs> it's an expedition, I always say. <laughs> it's an expedition. There you go. <laughs> and so, um, what are your 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 plans now with Peary, and 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 what is your ambition uh, first for Peary, and then for yourself as a as an entrepreneur or just as a human being, for the uh, for the uh, for the future? So, uh, my biggest assignment is is making Peary a viable company, right? So, getting getting the model complete. What's pretty amazing is that we've been able to create liquidity in a borrowing marketplace, which hasn't been done uh, before. Uh, which is now being copied actually by other companies, which is, which is um, quite flattering in, in a sense. Um, then we figured out how to scale this to other cities. So we know how to create supply in, in more than one, uh, one country and more than one city. Um, and next steps are, yeah, how do we create some sort of revenue model and how do we uh, make sure that there's so much demand that that revenue model will actually pay the bills uh, for Peerbee. Um, so that's you know that's the next step, and um, I we we um, I cannot tell you what the content is going to be. I can tell you what the method is, and that is that we run experiments and we try to be lean and really learn about what works and what doesn't, uh, and and that helps us discover what what the answers are to our questions. Okay, cool. So I wish you good luck with finding the right answers and maybe also finding better questions. And thank you for the interview. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.